What's up outdoorsman Greg here and today I'm going over my complete and total clothing system. Now I hunt all over the country from North Dakota all the way down to the swamps of Florida and Georgia so every kind of temperature range I have to be prepared for it. I got to be prepared for for wet boots and and long hikes and I hunted in West Virginia this year with the untamed so I was climbing mountains I mean I really had to be prepared for everything so I'm gonna show you guys my complete system from socks to boots to to head, hat, headwear and everything in between um, and kind of show you what has worked for me over the years from hunting out west in Colorado when I was stationed there in the military to way up in upstate New York where it was regularly below freezing to you know the swamps of Georgia and Florida uh, I pretty much have gear for everything so I'm not gonna keep talking I'm gonna show you guys the whole system let's start with the basics uh, for underwear I have switched this year to all merino wool and I used it on two hunts now this year in North Dakota early season and in West Virginia early season and I gotta say, it is way more comfortable than traditional cotton or polyester underwear. Merino wool, it's more expensive, but I found that it prevents chafing a little bit better. It doesn't stink at all. You can wear the same pair. When you're up in the mountains, you know, you don't always have a chance to change. And uh, you can wear these same pair of underwear for several days without them getting funky and nasty. So anytime I'm in the woods this year, I'm wearing merino underwear. Now these are first light. You can pick those up if you want, but you could probably find some less expensive options on Amazon. For socks, same deal. Everything you see here is a smattering of brands. These are all Merino. From lightweight, uh, these are, I believe, Darn Tough socks. These are Lorpen socks. And uh, just lightweight stuff for early season. Now when it gets uh, a little bit colder, I will switch over to a little bit heavier Merino wool and I, I'm not loyal to any brand here. These are Smart Wool. These are Arvada brand. And this is, as you can see, just a real tree brand of merino wool socks that I bought at Walmart, I believe. So there's a whole, whole range of pricing here, too. You can spend a lot of money on merino wool socks, or you can just spend a little bit of money on merino wool socks. But I recommend merino wool as much as humanly possible. Uh, especially if you're gonna get sweaty and gross, this is what you want. These are my base layers. I like to use uh, a merino wool base layers whenever possible. These are a, a mid-weight, a 250 gram merino wool. The brand is Mara Wool. I bought these on Amazon and I've been super happy with them. I've used them for a couple of years now and I just, I, I can't say enough good things. This is like my mid-weight base layer, say 40 degrees and above I'll wear this. Now if it gets really cold I will wear these Scentlock heavyweight base layers. These are my absolute favorite heavyweight base layer that I've ever used and I've used a ton of them from mil spec stuff when I was active duty to uh, mountain climbing stuff from Patagonia and other other heavyweight layers from other hunting manufacturers and these are by far the warmest i don't know if it's because of the activated carbon in there whether or not you you buy into that or not doesn't really matter for these purposes this is just crazy crazy warm i love these heavyweight base layers and then we have the volt heated vest this is i believe it's made for motorcycles but there's no insulation in this vest it's just got the uh, electric heating nodes in there and the three lithium ion battery packs so I can use this heated vest all day there's no weight there's no bulk it's great for uh, a, a mid temperature hunt like say 40 to 50 degrees where it's not crazy cold and you don't want to wear big heavy layers you can just throw this on and then a very lightweight jacket and you're good to go all day with that uh, this is a tip that I learned from John Eberhardt I use hand warmers and foot warmers but he told he turned me on to these peel and stick body warmers and you can kind of use these in like a poor man's uh, heated vest essentially I put one over each kidney and one over my heart and those work all day long they're a pretty cool system so this is a great way to save bulk 
if you don't want to carry extra layers a lot of extra stuff you could invest in something like this now these are just some random layers that i use this is a, a vest that i bought primarily for duck hunting but it works really well for deer hunting as well it's just a fleece fleece pullover uh, quarter zip pullover and this is a piece that i wear too it's a little bit heavier fleece I think Under Armour makes this as an outerwear piece, but I like to use it as a layering garment. And finally, uh, two pieces from the mountain climbing world. This is a Stoic Hadron down vest. It's uh, 850 fill power down. It weighs absolutely nothing and it is crazy warm. So if you, one of my favorite things to do is to put on the heated vest, put the down over the top of that, and then all I need is a lightweight shell and I can hunt down in the 20s with that. So super lightweight super packable very easy to deal with uh, the downside to down huh, is that if it gets wet it doesn't work that well so if it's going to be wet this is called the patagonia nano puff and that is a synthetic insulation but it does still does really well at keeping you warm a little bit heavier slightly bulkier but not bad um, i wear this a lot a lot a lot i've worn it on tons of trips and i'm a big fan of that particular lightweight jacket this is what I've been primarily wearing this season, early season. Uh, I'm a big fan of what First Light is doing, and this is what I have worn in West Virginia, North Dakota, Georgia, uh, pretty much all temperature ranges already. As I'm making this video, it's October. I was in North Dakota where it got down into the 30s, and I primarily wore this light season stuff, and then I was just hunting in South Georgia where it was up in the 90s, and this is the same stuff. So this is the first light guide light pant i really really like it it's really lightweight um where i would say the downside to this is if you're busting brush or going through briars or anything like that this is going to be probably too light for you and what i do in those scenarios where i expect to be going through thick stuff is i'm wearing these uh, first light sawbuck pants and these have a really dense nylon uh, covering on the front so thorns briars whatever can't get through this and i'm a big fan of these sawbuck pants as well they don't breathe quite as nice so if heat is the number one concern i'd say these guide lights are pretty dang awesome this is the button down ranger shirt it is made out of the what feels like the same material as this guide pants it's like the lightest shirt you could possibly imagine super light and i like that it's a button down because i can get more airflow in when it's really really hot this is a lightweight, uh, I believe they call it the long sleeve crew. It's 150 gram as opposed to, you know, your midweight stuff, which is 250 grams. But long sleeve shirt, breathes really well, doesn't stink. It's merino wool. It's crazy. It keeps you warm when it's getting cool and it keeps you cool when it's getting hot. Merino wool is a wonder fabric. Use as much merino wool in your system as you possibly can. So that's primarily my lightweight system and uh, it's been working really well thus far this year. This is the rest of my First Light system, and I'm like I said, I'm a big fan of all the First Light stuff. Starting over here, this is the Catalyst Pant, which is kind of their, I'm gonna say, mid, mid this is their mid-range suit. This is the Catalyst Pant and the Catalyst Jacket. Uh, really good, I would say like 50 to 50, 55 degrees you could just wear this with maybe like a lightweight merino base layer and that's all you'd need if you layer it up you can take this down to i would say the maybe the low to mid 40s and with the with a few different uh, um, layering garments underneath really like it it's soft brush fleece super quiet it's very comfortable the way they design this with the the pocket layout and just a lot of thought went into this catalyst suit and I'm a big fan of the Catalyst suit. These are some insulating layers here. You have the, I believe this is the Klamath hoodie, which I like. It's more of an insulating layer. There's no merino in this. It's the grid fleece pattern, so pretty warm. This is the Kiln, I believe it's called, and that is the midweight 250 gram merino insulating layer. And that is the Sawtooth vest. I have used every single one of these pieces thus far this season on 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 a hunt and i love them all that thing is awesome the sawtooth vest is great i really like this klamath hoodie it's kind of awesome just stuff in a pack and when you just need a wind a wind cut or 
you know, a little bit of extra warmth. This is awesome. And like I said, these are mega comfortable. This is when it gets cold. This is the solitude set, the solitude bibs and jacket. And oh my, they are some of the best um, uh, outer weight, outer garments for cold weather that I've ever used. And I've used a lot of them. I'm a big fan of the Russell APX G2, which I had for years. This I like a little bit better. And I also tried the Scentlock heavyweight stuff last year, and I just wasn't as big of a fan as the, of the Scentlock as I am of this First Light stuff. I feel like this First Light Solitude set, I'm, I'm going to say from the teens up uh, to probably, I don't know, in the 40s, you can wear this. And with the, with the right layering system, either First Light stuff or just other layering garments that you have, this Solitude set is freaking awesome. These are my favorite scent lock pieces. Other than the heavyweight base layers, uh, I've been through a lot of scent lock and this is the stuff that I like the most. Now, this isn't really a conversation about activated carbon, whether you like it or not. This is just on the validity of these as good hunting garments. This is the wind brace. This is possibly outside the base layers, my favorite scent lock piece that has ever been made. This is so freaking comfortable and warm. In the 40s, you don't need much else other than this. This is a heavyweight, low nap fleece, and I just absolutely love it. It's called the Scentlock Wind Brace, and I personally think everybody should have one. Um, add in the fact that it's got activated carbon technology, uh, you know, whether you agree it stumps the deer's nose altogether or not, uh, you can't deny the science that it's doing something for your scent control program. So uh, whether or not it's, like I said, it beats a deer's nose entirely is, is not really the point. But at least to me, it's not really the point. But it's going to do something to help your scent control when properly taken care of. And beyond that, it's just really comfortable and really warm. This is the Tactics All-Season Gear or All-Season Suit. It's just kind of a great mid-weight suit. And uh, I would say down into the upper 40s, you could probably get away with just rocking this and maybe some, some merino wool base layers or some small layering garments. But I'm a big fan of the Wind Brace and the Scentlock Tactics suit. This is my rain gear. This is military issue stuff Gore-Tex that I've had for years and years and years. This has been to Afghanistan. This has been in the elk woods in Montana and Colorado. It's been all over the place and it's held up pretty well. Matter of fact, there's some blood right there from one of my trips. But anyway, this stuff is awesome. It's the downside to this, although it is completely waterproof, it's loud and uh, it's not terribly comfortable. So. I guess that's the downside with really good rain gear, but it's really worked very well at keeping me dry. This year, this is, uh, I got the, the Under Armour Pack Light. I think it's called the Pack Light Suit, and I believe it is Gore-Tex as well. What I like about this system is it's not as loud. There's a, there's a soft exterior on the Under Armour uh, rain gear that you don't have with this just straight Gore-Tex material. So this is a little bit quieter. Now it's brand new. I haven't used it, so I can't speak to how well it's going to work in a rainstorm or how well it's going to hold up in the mountains. But I like the way that it that it fits, and it's very comfortable, and it's very quiet compared to this stuff. However, this stuff is basically bomb-proof. So that's my two, two things that I do for rain. And uh, like I said, I've been using this for years, and I'm going to try this one out this year. This is some of my uh, heaters or accessories for keeping warm. Starting over here, I like to wear these mechanics gloves. I've I had these in, in the military and they're just kind of a great all purpose, all, all year long glove. They're very lightweight, easy to get on and off. Uh, they've got a leather sole or palm, so they, they hold up pretty well. And when it gets cold, I will pair that with an Arctic Shield mitten. And the thing I like about the mitten is there's no fingers at all in this. It's just a shell with the fold over mitten top. I like that because those the fingers get in the way sometimes and it makes it harder to get the mitten on and off. If the you have a lot of companies that make this fold over style muff, but I don't I don't really like it cuz they almost always have fingers. These don't have fingers and that's what I like about this. These are just for when I'm riding my e-bike. Uh, 
sometimes I wear these lightweight fleece gloves here just as a standalone unit if I don't wear those, but that's what these are for. And then when I'm riding the bike, the e-bike or the boat, uh, if I'm doing some kind of weird access where I'm getting in the wind a whole lot, I'll wear these ski gloves just to, just to protect my hands when it's really, really cold. That's just your standard uh, hand warmer muff. I've had that for years and years and years. Looks like it's made by Sports Afield. Nah, it's fleece, it's warm, it's awesome. This is a neck warmer, neck gaiter that I, same thing I've had for years and years and years. I love it. Uh, there's a lot of companies that make more expensive ones, but this thing has always worked for me. Uh, this is a lightweight scent lock head cover that I will wear in more, more mild temperatures, like 40 degrees. Uh, if I want a full face covering and then I've got a, an array of beanies. That's a Sitka one that I happen to like. That's a APX G2 by Russell, which that's probably my favorite beanie because it has uh, the, the shape of it. Uh, works on my ears really good. And then if I'm, if I'm in the mountains or something, that is a black rock down beanie that I've used a ton and it's super light, but it's crazy warm because it's filled with down. Now, these are really, really awesome as well. These are Arctic Shield boot covers. I don't wear insulated boots. You will see that in a moment because I don't like my feet to sweat when I'm walking in. And when you're hunting mobile, you generally are walking a little ways. And if you have big, heavy, insulated boots, your feet will sweat, which you will get even colder on stand. So I don't wear any insulated boots. I don't own any insulated boots. And, I'm, and if I'm hunting below 40 degrees, I will carry these boot warmers with me and then put a peel and stick hand warmer down there so I have some heat generation as well as the insulation from these Arctic Shield boot warmers. And that's what I use for keeping warm. Those are my accessories that I take. Last but not least, these are the boots that go with me on pretty much every single trip. These are the workhorse. Um, I got these this past summer and I've been hunting with them quite a bit. North Dakota, West Virginia, Georgia, all over the place. These are Thors by Crispy and they're expensive, but man, are they awesome. That is a very stiff soled boot and it's just a wicked comfortable boot. Uh, you take them off at the end of the day and your feet aren't fatigued. It's pretty. An, it's a pretty amazing boot. I'm a big fan. So I will wear those if I don't expect to encounter any water. If I do expect to encounter water, I will wear these Lacrosse Arrowhead boots. I have four pairs of these. I bought them on clearance for $19.99 a piece and I bought four pairs. So these are the rubber boots that I will be using forever. I've worn them in countless swamps in Georgia and in Florida. My feet never get wet in these and they're very lightweight. Uh, again, no insulation in this and no insulation in this. However, they do. these are waterproof. I guess they're Gore-Tex lines, so that is a, a, it can get a little sweaty because of the Gore-Tex, not terrible. And no matter what you do in rubber boots, your feet are gonna get a little sweaty if you're putting any, any sort of miles on them. But if you have Thinsulate in here, it's gonna be even worse. So those are my workhorse boots right there. No water, water. And again, these both work really well with those Arctic Shield booties. When I get on stand, I can, uh, or in the saddle rather, I can put slip those uh, booties over these and these, and they work great with a little hand warmer in there. If I expect to encounter a lot of water, I will carry these Yoder Chaps with Tingly boots. These are uh, hip waders, obviously, but they are so incredibly light. They weigh almost nothing. They're very comfortable and they're surprisingly quiet once you get them broken in. Right out of the box, they're a little loud, like all hip waders are, but as you, as you get them worn in and you've put a few miles on them, they get quieter. So, can't recommend these enough. I've been using them for many years. These are foam, EVA foam boots made by Tingley. Think Crocs, uh, kind of the same process as Crocs. Uh, so they're very comfortable and they're very waterproof. I have zero issues with any of these boots i will probably buy another pair of those when these wear out and i will be wearing these for many years because i own four pairs of them and the crispy thors they're expensive so uh, lord willing i don't have to buy another pair of those anytime soon but i love them and if they got burned up in a fire tonight i would buy another pair because i like them so much so there you go that is my complete layering and clothing system 
this will take me from zero degrees to a hundred degrees so yeah some of this stuff is expensive the boots can be expensive the first light stuff is expensive the scent lock stuff is expensive and some of the some more specialty pieces for the from the backpacking community that stuff can be expensive so yes it is an expensive gear list uh, I am of, of the opinion that you buy once and cry once so I invest as much as I possibly can in gear one time and I buy the best that I can afford and uh, so I'm a big proponent of, of buying quality gear now you can recreate this on much more of a budget like I said if you don't get into some of the hunting specific items you can find deals buy stuff secondhand I, I when I bought my Russell APX G2 stuff that I used for years I bought it all secondhand and it worked for a really good or worked for a long time you can get on Facebook and some of the other forums and groups and find a lot of this stuff uh, lightly used for a really good saving so get creative with how you buy this stuff wait for sales and do that and you can you can build your kit out over a number of years I've been building this for years I got a lot of the first light stuff recently but a lot of the other stuff well basically everything except the first light stuff I've been putting together for several years uh, so you can do it on a budget or you know if you aren't worried about money I guess you're like one of the three people in the world that's not worried about money you can just go out and drop a drop a dime on all this stuff but hopefully that helps you guys maybe you got some ideas about something that will help you be a little bit more efficient a little bit warmer a little bit cooler uh, and maybe a little bit more comfortable so thanks for watching and for checking out the video you guys uh, go outside and hiking biking fishing hunting especially now it's October get out there and go hunting uh, but just do something and get outdoors